Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this special edition of Who's Next. Today we're headed out west to Colorado Springs, Colorado to talk with quarter midget racer, 14 year old Tyler Wiggins. How's it going, Tyler? It's going pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. So I'm always curious to ask people, especially in the wintertime, being from <clears throat> Florida, how cold is it there today in Colorado? It's pretty cold. Any uh, snow on the ground? No, but it's just it's really chilly outside. Really chilly outside. But the good thing is for you guys, you wouldn't have to drive very far to find snow. So you get up in the mountains and I'm sure there's all kinds of snow up there. So let's get right into this interview. So at what age did you actually start racing? Uh, I started racing at 10. You started racing And ever since then, old. yeah, and ever since then I've loved it. Okay. And so... What made you decide that you want to be a racer, though? Um, well, uh, my great-great-grandpa raced in, back in the 1930s, and he passed down, you know, generation to generation to me. And uh, it was really my dad and grandpa that influenced me into racing. But, um, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool, man. I don't know if I've had a lot of fourth generation racers on my show before. So uh, that's got to be pretty neat, man. Back in the 1930s, boy, I, you know, cars have come a long way since the 1930s. So mm -hmm. um, you started racing when you were at the age of 10. And tell us a little bit about the quarter midget associations that you run for. Um, well, I run at a PPQMA and SCQMA, um, they are like the, the main tracks that we go to. Um, and they're uh, located in Ellicott, Colorado and Pueblo, Colorado. Right. And for those people that don't know what that is, that's the <clears throat> Pike Peaks Quarter Midget Racing Association and the Southern Colorado Quarter Midget uh, Racing Association. And we've got a lot of our race face drivers that actually run there at those tracks with the Colby's and uh, with Colby and Justice Sokol and also um, uh, Cassidy Hines runs there. So um, let me just ask you straight up, what is your favorite race track to compete on? Um, my favorite would probably be PPQMA or SCQMA. I, I really like those tracks. Yeah. Yeah. And you may, you may have a different um, answer for that as we get uh, into next year, because I understand that you guys are going to be doing a lot of the uh, hitting a lot of the major USAC races. So you're going to be going to places like Daytona and maybe up to Pocono and Indianapolis and down in mm -hmm. Texas. So you, you got to be excited about that. Oh, yeah. Very excited. All right. So I see a lot of hardware behind you, you know, um, so I know that you've done some race winnings and you've got something hanging around your neck there. Could tell us a little bit about that. Oh, uh, this was uh, the medal from PPIR um, that I got. Yeah, it, it means a lot because I started all the way from the back and raced up to second. And that, that, was, that was really exciting for me. Well, that sounds like an unbelievable performance because one of the things that we, we try to make sure that people understand is that it's not always about your results as much as it is about your performance. So, you know, if you started first and you won the race, that's good. That's a good result. But doesn't mean that you had a great performance that race unless you lap the field. But starting at the tail end of the field and working your way all the way up to a second place finish is an amazing performance. And I congratulate you for that. Thank you. So let's talk about some of the classes that you race in. Um, I, I think you told me you run in either two or three different classes. And which classes are those? Um, I run in heavy animal and light slash heavy road formula. Okay, and so when you say light slash heavy world formula, does that mean that you're they're taking the light world formulas and the heavy world formulas and combining them into, or do you um, actually run two different divisions? Well, I was running light, but for right now, I'm switching into heavy, and we might we might switch back and forth. It, it you know. All right. So, of the two classes, are you? Are you more favorable to the animal division or are you more favorable to the formula division? Um, I think the animal. 
I don't know, just something about it. I just like it. Now, I never ask anybody this question, so I hate to put you on the spot. Where did they come up with the name animal for that class? Any idea? Um, I have no idea, but it, it definitely sounds like an animal. It's I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if the engine was so, you know, so bad that it was kind of like, oh man, this is like the animal class, or again, <laughs> you said it could be the sound of the car. But I just hate to put you on the spot, but I've always been curious about that. So, I understand that you have a nickname. So what do people call you? Um, Iceman. The Iceman. And where in the world did that come from? Um, well, my mom and dad, they, uh, they usually call me Iceman because when I'm on the track, I'm, my emotions are cold as ice and I'm cool and collective. Um, but also, it's from my favorite movie, Top Gun. All right, well, that's, that's pretty neat that, that you kind of got that from Top Gun, but I'll give you a little homework. Do some research about a NASCAR, very famous NASCAR driver and champion. His name was Terry Labonte, and he was actually called the Iceman as well. So you may read up on him a little bit and find out that you guys got some things in common. I know you both have, <laughs> Terry had a brother, and you have a brother also that races. Mm -hmm. All right, so... In each one of our shows, we do a little segment that's called Get to Know the Driver in 60 Seconds. So it's a little game. Are you ready to play? Yeah. Okay, here we go. What's your favorite food? Uh, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Favorite video game? Um, any of the men. I just love football. Okay. Favorite TV show? Uh, full slash Fuller House. Okay. Favorite color? Orange. Favorite superhero? Flash. Because the, fa the flash is fast, is that it? Mm -hmm. right. Good answer. Uh, favorite subject in school? Math. Favorite racing series? Uh, NASCAR Cup. Favorite race car driver? Um, all time, Dale Jr. and Dale Sr., but right now, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson, because he's kind of on the same path that you are, right? Kyle started down yeah. with quarter midgets and then went to micros. And uh, so let me ask you, do you run the wall? Do you run like that far off the wall like Kyle does? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm on the outside. There you go. Okay. So give us a quick rundown of your racing career. Just kind of walk us through some of the bigger races that you've won and if you've won any local track championships or anything like that. Okay. Well, I started in uh, 2010, and I ran my first uh, um, series there. Um, we didn't really finish like we wanted to, but then coming into the next season, uh, um, we finished, I believe, fourth. And then in my third season, uh, I had a senior Honda championship and a light uh, 160 championship um, and runner up for light road formula. All right, that's awesome, man. So let me ask you something. I want you to kind of look back and tell me what it was like to win your very, very first race. Um, it was very exciting. Um, I don't really have like the words to explain like how emotional and how how uh, um, cool it was because uh, to see like our effort um, like what we put into the car like and see that it did good it, it just meant a lot because of how much work we put into it and the time and dedication um, but yeah it was a it was it was an experience you know, and that's something that will never change. I mean, if you watch the cup race this weekend, you saw Joey Logano and he got a little emotional about, because again, it's been a long journey for him and uh, you go through your ups and your downs. And, and then when it's finally there, I mean, you think you're ready for it, but then the emotions just kind of take over and you almost become kind of speechless. So is there anything better than taking that victory lap with the checkered flag after a race? I mean, that's, that's got to be high up on the. <laughs> Nothing is better than that. Goal. That's yeah. That's like the that's like the top thing. 
the top thing. I, I would imagine that. So have you had anything interesting that's happened in any of your victory laps? Um, no, not really. I just, you know, take the checker flag and go around. All right. Okay. So let's talk about your most memorable race win. And where was that actually at? Um, my most memorable race was at the Sky High Nationals of 2017. Um, I was in my senior Honda class and, uh, um, I won that and that was, that was really exciting because again, we, we had a tough going. So the past weeks was very hard for us and to see our work show again on the racetrack was, um, it was definitely an, an amazing, um, memorable race. Right. Let me ask you something. Do you do a lot of work on the car yourself? Uh, yes. Okay. You just seem like that kind of guy that would be in there getting his hands dirty and working on the car. And I know we talked a little bit about the show, uh, before the show, I mean, and, and you guys actually run a belt on your drive line mm -hmm. instead of a chain. So tell me why you think, and this is a good opportunity here. It's kind of like your own little, uh, Wiggins belt commercial. Why is a belt better than a chain? Um, well, uh, a belt is, in my opinion, better than a chain because, like, you don't really have those slip-ups that you do with chains. And um, chains usually break a lot. And our belt drives, they're, they're um, firm and stiff. So... I mean, they won't really slip or break up, so. So you got something special to prove today, and we're going to zero in on this because everybody, this is one of the very few drivers here at the Winter Nationals that's actually running this system that you're about to look at here. We're going to take a look at it from the back of the car. Now you see a lot of people having to put the chains back on the cars. Well, guess what? Tyler's grandfather has been able to come up with maybe one of the most advanced belt systems in all of quarter midget racing. So you guys need to go check this thing out. This could be the future of quarter midget racing along with some other things that are going on. So let's get see if we can get in and get a little bit better look at this. There's the magic, everybody, right there. No chain, all belt driven. So there you've got it. From the race team of Tyler Wiggins, he's getting ready to go out in the A main here at the Winter Nationals in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll see you guys real soon. Well, there you have it. For all you quarter midget racers out there that are running chains on it, you might want to consider running a Wiggins belt system on your car for 2019. And I'm sure if you reach out to Tyler and his and his family, they'd be more than happy to fix you right up. So uh, I know that oh, all yeah. racers have to make sacrifices uh, to be able to, to go out and do the amount of racing that you do. And so talk to me a little bit about some of the things that you've had to give up so that you could pursue a, a career in racing. Um. I've had to sacrifice a lot of things like hanging out with friends, school activities, um, just time in general, um, sports, uh, hanging out with um, family or relatives. And yeah, it's eh, but in the it's end, worth it, right? it's worth it. It's yeah. all worth it. So let me ask you a question. What do your friends think about you being a race car driver? Do do all of them believe you, or did were there a couple of different occasions through your career that you had to actually prove to them that you were really a race car driver? Um. Well, when I tell my friends that I'm a race car driver, um, at first they don't really believe it, but I have to show them, and then once they do believe it, they think it's like really cool because you know. For them, it's like, well, I can't drive. I'm not 15 or 16 yet. And it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's cool. So I ask, all the, I ask all the race car drivers, I ask them, I said, so 
if your best if your two best friends came over to your house or over to your shop would you let them drive your race car oh oh god no no way <laughs> no that's a good answer good answer <laughs> all right so who are your biggest supporters in your racing career um my biggest supporters is definitely my parents and grandparents they've they've put this together and helped me since day one and they they Oh, and my brother. My brother's a really big supporter too. And he's he's just as big as a supporter as I am for him. Um we look out for each other, but yeah. Those are those are my biggest supporters. So it, now's a perfect time to give your little brother a little shout out. What's his name and what series does he race in? Um his name's Casey Wiggins and he races in um Senior Honda and Light 160. He, ran, he runs the same series as we do, so. Are you guys pretty competitive? Oh, yeah. How much younger is he than you are? Uh, he's three years younger than I am. Three years younger than you. Is he going to be a good racer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he's had somebody good to follow and somebody good to help him. So do you get a, is there a certain amount of pleasure that you get from that as far as being able to kind of instruct him a little bit and give him some advice? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, so let's talk oh. about what are your 2019 year plans look like? So I know that one of the things that we talked about is you guys are going to go out and hit some of the bigger USAC races. And I happen to know for a fact that right after Thanksgiving, you guys are getting everything together and you guys are headed to Las Vegas. So are you looking, to, looking forward to that big race in Vegas? I am definitely looking forward to Las Vegas and all the upcoming races after that. Right. So do you have any idea what the car count looks like yet in Vegas? Have you heard any scuttlebutt on that? Um, I, so far, I think it's like over 300. Over 300. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what it was last year. I mean, I watched so many races. So I'm really looking forward to getting to actually uh, meet you and, and your parents and your grandparents if they're going to be there in Vegas. That's going to be yeah. really cool. So now let's go... And let's talk about your ultimate racing goals. What, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And then after that, what series do you actually want to end up in um, as far as your ultimate career goal? Um, well, what I see myself in five years, um, honestly, I feel like if I put in uh, like as much hard work as I am right now, I'd, I'm pretty sure I'd end up in NASCAR truck in five years, I believe I can. Okay, so we talked again a little bit before the show and, and maybe next year you're looking at, or maybe even later this year, you're looking at possibly getting into some junior late model races. Mm -hmm. So that's a great- Either a junior stone. late model or legends. Or legends, yeah, so either one of those are a great stepping stone to be able to get yeah. um, into that truck series. So you go from, you know, whether it be legends and junior late models up to, you know, pro late models or super late models, whatever they're kind of referred to in your particular part of the, of the United States. And then again, that next step up there would be into the NASCAR k and slash ARCA, because I think by the time you get there, those are going to be the same. I don't think they're going to mm -hmm. be any different there. And then that next step is truck series. So you're really not that far away. Um, you know, you, you could definitely be there in the next five years. And like, like you said, if you work hard enough, you're willing to put the time in, and make sure that you develop your on-track skills as much as your off-track skills. Because, you know, in today's racing, those off-track skills are very, very important to be able to attract the sponsors that it takes to be able to pay those bills. Unless you're the mm -hmm. first racer that I've ever met that's got a money tree in the backyard. Do you have a tree in your backyard <laughs> that grows money? No. I have no. asked a bunch of racers that I've never found a money tree. You hear about money trees, but no one has any. So... <laughs> The last thing, two last questions. What do you like to do when you're actually not racing? Do you have any other hobbies? Um, I mean, I like sleeping and eating. You um, sleeping. And hanging out with friends and playing video games. Um, and uh, hanging out with family. And that's about it when I'm not racing. All right. So tell us something about yourself that most people do not know about you. Um, 
Well, uh, I guess uh, I'm part Asian. Uh, yeah, I'm part Asian. So that's not. No one really knows that about me because you know they don't really see that. That's that's a good thing for me to know. So right now we're just about done with the interview. So would you like to, is there anything else that you want to share with the viewing audience? Uh, maybe give them a shout out on what your Facebook page is, or if you've got a website or anything like that. And then also, if you want to talk about any of your sponsors. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, our Facebook is Wiggins racing and our Instagram is also Wiggins racing. And, uh, my sponsors is, uh, Wiggins belt drives and um, my parents and grandparents. All right. Well, very good. Well, Tyler, I really want to thank you for being on our show. I look forward to seeing you out in Vegas ne basically next week, man. We're, we're yeah. that close to it. I wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving. And all of you viewers that are out there, again, thank you for tuning in. You just heard it from young 14-year-old Tyler Wiggins from Colorado Springs, Colorado, an up-and-coming quarter midget racer. I shouldn't say up-and-coming quarter midget racer. He's already doing that, but an up-and-coming racer that's headed towards the NASCAR truck series. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Again, make sure to go out and support local racing in your community, and we'll see you back here real soon.